Hello and Namaste everyone. Today we'll be talking about the radius bone. The radius bone is the lateral bone of the forearm. Forearm is the region extending between the elbow joint and the wrist joint. There are two long bones in the forearm region. The radius is the lateral bone which is present lateral to the ulna bone which lies parallel to it and the radius is thicker than the ulna. Radius is involved in weight bearing activities and is more prone to fracture when compared to ulna because when you fall on an outstretched hand, the force from the hand directly transmits to the radius. Also, since the two bones of the forearm are interconnected by an interosseous membrane, the force can be transmitted from one bone to other through the interosseous membrane causing the fracture of both bones of the forearm. The radius is homologous to the tibia of the leg presenting features. Just like any other long bone, the radius has two ends, the upper end, the lower end and a shaft. Articulations. Superiorly, it articulates with the capitulum of the humerus forming the radiohumeral component of the elbow joint complex, which is a variety of hinge type of synovial joint. With ulna, it forms the proximal radio ulnar the middle radio ulnar and the distal radio ulnar joints. The proximal and the distal radio ulnar joints are pivot variety of synovial joints, whereas the middle radio ulnar joint is a syndesmosis type of fibrous joint. Inferiorly, it forms the wrist joint, which is an ellipsoid variety of synovial joint by articulating with the scaphoid and the lunate bone. Side determination. It can be done by considering the following points. The disc-like head is present superiorly the sharpest border of the shaft, the intraosseous border, presents medially and in the inferior end there is a tubercle on the dorsal aspect called the Lister's tubercle present dorsally. So this is the right radius and this is the left radius. Anatomical position. The bone is held in a vertical way. Now talking about the features in detail, we begin with upper end. It has a disc-shaped head, a neck, and a radial or bicipital tuberosity. Head. The disc-shaped head, covered by articular cartilage, bears a small concavity on its upper surface for articulation with the capitulum of humerus, forming the humeroradial part of the compound elbow joint. The medial aspect of the head articulates with the radial notch of the ulna. Here forming the proximal radio ulnar joint. The proximal radio ulnar joint is stabilized by a strong band of tissue known as the annular ligament which surrounds the head of the radius. During pronation and supination of the forearm, the head of the radius moves inside the annular ligament. Neck. It is the constricted part below the head. Radial tuberosity. This oval-shaped bony prominence is present below the anteromedial part of the neck Tendon of the biceps brachii is inserted on the posterior rough part of the tuberosity, therefore it is also called bicipital tuberosity. Anterior smooth part is covered by a synovial bursa which is present between the biceps brachii tendon and the bone. Lower end. It is the expanded end and is roughly quadrilateral shaped. This end is identified by the presence of five surfaces and a styloid process. The surfaces are the anterior surface, the posterior or the dorsal surface, the medial surface, the lateral surface and the inferior surface. Dorsal surface. The dorsal surface of the lower end is marked by the presence of a dorsal tubercle of Lister. Various grooves adjacent to these tubercles help to relay the tendons of the forearm extensors, example tendon of extensor pollicis longus, grooves the medial aspect of the tubercle. The anterior smooth surface is used for palpation of the radial artery lateral to the tendon of flexocarpi radialis. The medial surface of lower end of radius has an ulnar notch which articulates with the head of the ulna forming the distal radio ulnar joint. The lower articular surface has a lateral triangular surface for articulating with scaphoid and a medial quadrangular articular surface articulating with the lunate thus forming the wrist joint. 
The lateral surface bears a prominent projection downwards called the radial styroid process which can be palpable on the floor of the anatomical snuff box. The brachioradialis and radial collateral ligament are attached to the styloid process. Styloid process of radius is longer than its ulnar counterpart. Shaft. It is the long part of the radius that is narrow proximally and wide distally. The shaft is triangular in cross section and thus presents three borders and three surfaces. The borders are the anterior border, the medial border and the posterior border. The surfaces are the anterior surface, the lateral surface and the posterior surface. It should be noted that muscles of supination and pronation are inserted onto radius. The medial border, also known as the intraosseous border, starts just inferior to the radial tuberosity. It takes a downward course and forms the posterior border on the distal end of the radius. The anterior border begins inferior to the anterior lateral part of the radial tuberosity. It courses downwards and becomes continuous with the anterior border of the styloid process. The anterior surface present between the medial and the anterior borders bears the presence of a nutrient foramen which is directed upwards towards the elbow. Hence, we can say that the lower end of the radius is its growing end. The radius ossifies by endochondral ossification. The primary center appears in the shaft during 8th week of intrauterine life. There are two secondary ossification centers which appear postnatally. The one for the upper end appears during 4th year and fuses during 16th year of life while the secondary ossification center of the lower end appears during 1st year of postnatal life and fuses during the 18th year. Clinical anatomy, pulled elbow. It is the dislocation of the radial head from the anterior ligament in commonly seen in children of 2 to 6 years of age and it occurs as a result of pull on the extended elbow. Therefore, it is more logical to hold the children by their armpits instead of forearm or wrist. Coley's fracture. It is the most common type of radial fracture and occurs in the distal one foot due to fall on outstressed hand. As the structures distal to the fracture sites are displaced in the posterior and upward direction, the wrist and hand show a dinner fork deformity. Smith's fracture. It is also the fracture of radius on its distal part and occurs due to fall on the dorsal aspect of the hand. As opposed to Coley's fracture, the structures distal to the fracture site are displaced anteriorly. Galizy fracture. It is the fracture of radius on its lower one third and is associated with dislocation or subluxation of the distal radio ulnar joint. So, this was a short overview of the radius bone. Thank you for watching.